Now, this vehicle had been dropping to uh, into the 12s. You see it right there? Okay, now you come over here. This is the battery on the right side. Over here is the battery on the left side. And we're gonna look at the voltage here. Let's see. Oh, I think it was already set there. See? See, it's reading. Well, that thing's dirty. 15 volts. That's good. Now, these things are really sensitive uh, to anything you do to your vehicle. Now, I added a second battery. See there? It's back to normal. Okay, now, I, I couldn't understand what the heck is going on. But it's got a current sensor. See? It doesn't drop any further than 14.5 now. But it's got a battery sensor uh, that controls everything. And uh, I'll show it to you in a little bit. I don't know if you see them, but the driving lights, or the DRL, daytime running lights are on. So here's my second battery. And uh, the way you connect these is you run a wire, the positive to here. Of course, I've got a here. I've got a uh, a switch uh, that works on the on the ignition that turns it on. That's a pack 200. Anyway, see this cable here. That cable runs over here to the, the battery. Okay, so you got to connect this here. Now I added some additional cables. I added. Uh, one cable running back to the ground and I added another cable over there see because these uh, Silverados have a lot of problems with that cable in the back it always has problems so you have that there okay, it's got a brand new alternator anyway here's the battery and of course I got the cables here you know these cables this is the ground uh, the uh, positive uh, second cable to the the alternator and of course over here I've got the the positive going that way and I've got a, a fuse right there you know right here so you ought to always have to have a fuse going to the other battery but right here if you look at this that's your current sensor now you need to run the ground the ground that comes over to the uh, other, uh, the alternator that I added goes to through this. This is the current sensor. Wow, man, we're looking through the phone. This is the current sensor. And here's the other one, because I, I couldn't figure out what the problem was. See? Uh, but this is a current sensor, and there are certain things that need to ignite the, uh, the uh, the alternator so uh, I had taken off the uh, the DRL fuses and uh, as soon as uh, you know and, and funny things started to happen but those lights from the DRL actually help this current uh, ignite the alternator so this is your current sensor and this is a uh, very dependent on a lot of things. So some of the things you can do uh, to ignite or turn the alternator into charging mode is do little things like um, uh, use the towel hall method. I mean, you know, and that'll, uh, you know, just, uh, well, especially if you're using a camper, you better turn that on. Uh, otherwise your voltage is gonna, geez, you're gonna run it down to nothing. You won't get anywhere. Uh, things like turning the headlights on. Now, if you turn the le headlights on, in my case, that kicked me into having removed the DRL fuses because I didn't want the DRLs, uh, you know, rain all the time and, and uh, burn up my lights. Well, unfortunately, that caused me a, a ton of uh, headaches. Not headaches, but, you know, hey, annoying, really annoying because eventually it'll drop down to 12 something you know 
Well, actually, it goes down to 12.5, and, and it kicks into automatically. But, you know, it's a headache to see that needle go down, or in my case, the, uh, the digital uh, readers. Uh, they go down, and then eventually it'll come back up. You know, which is really annoying. Uh, now, putting the DRL fuses back in had the headlights on, and that's it. It's consistently 14.5 and, uh, and to 14.8. Okay, never goes down. So that uh, that turns it into charging mode. And so you better watch it. If something goes wrong, you better make sure that the uh, uh, the bulbs on on the on the headlight uh, is is, uh, is out or something. Or maybe it's it's no good and, uh, and it's uh, well it's it, it's bad, okay. So that's gonna throw it uh, uh, you know into all sorts of weird things. Now the other thing you can do uh, again the towel hall, the headlights, the wipers. If if the wipers are on for more than three seconds, it'll kick it back in and you know it, it'll get you you know out of the the excited mode that you're gonna be in. <laughs> so. But um, uh, the HVAC uh, is going to kick it in too. So turn on the AC, uh, and that'll uh, you know that'll start uh, making it uh, uh, turn it back into charging mode. Uh, if you turn on the blower, now whether it's it's heat or AC, if you turn that high speed blower on at uh, the high speed, that'll kick it on. If you put your rear uh, defoggers on, which uh, a lot of vehicles don't have, but you you could do that and it'll kick it in uh, and of course the, the, the blower is always going to kick it in now uh, the battery temperature uh, you know it, it knows that so you better keep that uh, sensor uh, which I need to actually move it back closer uh, closer to the battery so it detects the, uh, uh, the correct temperature for the battery but that will also if it's um, Zero degrees is going to kick it in no matter what, okay? But it's a good thing to, you know, I'm thinking about even co covering that thing up uh, to get the, the heat from the um, the engine down uh, because, it, it, you know, if it's too close to the engine, it's going to get hot and uh, it's going to think that's a battery, okay? So little things like that. Uh, of course, uh, uh, it, the BCM automatically uh, gets it into charge mode if the battery is at 80 percent so you know that's well you know it might uh, you know see that's what the weird thing that i was seeing uh uh without the drl uh, fuses in there uh the battery would go down to 12.8 or something you know and maybe it was thinking of going further down and it would kick it in uh, but it's, again it's very annoying now who, who's going to do this but if you go at 90 miles an hour it'll kick it in. Don't do that. Um, of course, the other problem that, that could be the problem is that the current sensor is, is bad. So, and I replaced it thinking that I was going to solve the problem there. But, uh, you know, it turned out that it was the, uh, the DRL fuses. Um, but uh, automatically, the, 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 the battery or the, the, the ECM will determine if the battery voltage is uh, down to 12.5. If it reaches that point, it's going to kick it in. But uh, don't, don't make it, you know, get to that point. Do something to get your, your, your voltage together. Again, if you make changes to these vehicles, you've got to be real careful because these computers, uh, they're not dumb. I mean, they've spent a lot of time uh, getting this to work. Now, GM really went overboard because the other, uh, you know, dealers, uh, Fords and Dodges and all that, they have this, but they didn't go as far as going into the fuel economy mode, they call it, uh, you know, and so it, it, it's trying to do that, which is kind of, you know, really, really ridiculous, because it's causing all sorts of problems. Now, you better watch it. If you add a second battery, make sure that that ground cable goes to the engine so that the, the current can be detected on the ground wire coming to the alternator. Otherwise, uh, if you run a cable to, from ground uh, to ground on your batteries, it's not going to detect that something's going on with your other battery. A and it's going to really go uh, 
uh, again berserk. So be careful about that if you add a second battery. Anyway, these are some of the things that'll that, that'll kick it in, and uh, hopefully you don't have this problem. Uh, but if you fool around with your vehicle uh, with the voltages and or mess around and and the wiring is correct and everything else, and you see a problem, it's probably something that you did. Uh, and uh, or these are some at least some of the things that you can do uh, to be annoyed by it.